Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 216 for the 27th of Sivan in a leap year. So before we begin today's episode, I want to start with a pretty exciting announcement, which is namely that with Gimel Thomas coming up, which is the your site of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, I wanted to do something special, kind of like to honor that day. And I decided to start taking sponsorships for these episodes for this podcast. And I thought that in addition to this being a good way to help there be a little bit more uh, audience participation in this endeavor, which I think would be nice and a little bit of collab- uh, collaborative kind of feel to it. It will also help me, uh, in addition to covering the various costs that go into running this podcast. So there are like certain costs, like getting the equipment, you know, having the different programs that I use to run the pro- stuff, podcast, stuff like that. Like all of these things do cost some money. But in addition to that, I've, I think eventually if I get a pool that's big enough of resources, I would like to even use it for the sake of advertising and marketing to be able to get this podcast to reach a wider audience. So without any pressure at all, of course, I am just putting it out there that now there are there is the opportunity. Sponsorships are open for this podcast. I'm giving the suggested donation of $18 per episode if you'd like to sponsor a podcast. Obviously, you can, you can give more <laughs> that it would be more than welcome, but whatever you'd like. So it's a really nice way to honor a loved one, whether it's a loved one you know's uh, your site or birthday or for whatever occasion maybe just something good that happens in your life or just for the sake of sponsoring the podcast itself. So I had actually made this announcement over my WhatsApp group the other day where I post these episodes as they come out. Uh, And so if you'd like to be added to that group, please do be in touch with me. And so anyhow, I posted this on the WhatsApp group and literally within minutes, I already got my first sponsorship, which was a sponsorship for today. It was from Sarah Korn, who generously spon- sponsored this today's episode in honor of her brother of blessed memory, uh, whose yurt site is today on the 27th of Sivan. His name is Yitzchak Mordechai ben Chaim. So today's episode is dedicated in memory, in loving memory of Yitzchak Mordechai ben Chaim, Zichron Alivracha. And so, yeah, so thank you so much for Sarah for kicking off this this project and I really hope to hear from some other participants. So if any of you would like to sponsor a podcast and an an upcoming podcast, then please reach out to me. The easiest way to reach out to me is probably through email, which would be itistaught at gmail.com. Or of course, if you know my personal information, a lot of you know me personally, then you can always reach out to me just through WhatsApp or um, calling me, text, Facebook, whatever it is. But if you'd like to just keep it a little bit more formal, you can reach out to me at at itistaught at gmail.com. And so that's it. So that's my announcement for today. And I'm excited to see what other sponsorships come up. And with that being said, let's begin today's episode. So in the past few episodes, and especially yesterday's episode, we've discussed this idea of how it is that while God knows and sees every single thing here in this world and is very much present here in this world, he is very much at the same time unaffected by the happening. Things change here in this world when the world changes as it constantly does. God remains un- God remains the same God at all times and everywhere and in every place. And this way of relating to God, the way that we think of God in this kind of more transcendent way, so to speak, the term that we use to describe this in Hebrew, in Hasidic literature, is sovev ko almin, which is the aspect of encompassing all the worlds, the way that God 
grasps all the worlds, the way that we encompass a thought in our mind or a concept or a, a thing in our mind, that's the way that God encompasses the entirety of the worlds or of all the worlds. We also mentioned that there's another aspect of God or another way by which we relate to God that is very different than than the way of relating to God in, in as God being transcendent, as God being this sovev ko amin. And that's the way of God filling all the worlds, the imminence of God. So it's these two things that seem to be really paradoxical, but of course, God being God, we know that God is able to hold these paradoxical realities and be both, be both of these same paradoxical realities at the same time. And so while on the one hand, we say that God transcends all of the worlds and is not affected by all of the worlds and encompasses all worlds equally, at the same time, we also say that God is very much imminent and God is very much here in this world in a very deep and personal way. God is a personal God. So we've spoken about this before, that a mistake that a lot of scholars, even very, you know, intelligent scholars have made is they think of God as being this aloof kind of being who created the world something for nothing once upon a time and then kind of left it as is and he's standing from afar or seated, sitting from afar flying far from afar however you want to uh, imagine it in your mind and just like kind of looking in a cursory way on the world below but we know according to Chassidus that that's not at all true and we know that according to Chassidus God is very much a personal God and God is very much involved in the intricate aspects of our lives and the nitty-gritty aspects of our lives and our thoughts and our actions and everything that we do and that's the focus of what it is that we're going to be discussing today is this other aspect of God this aspect of God that we know of in Chassidus as Memale Kolamin that he fills all the worlds and what we mean by this what we mean by this imminence uh, imminent aspect of God is that God is very much present and very much here and very much involved in every single aspect of creation such that when we look at the details of creation the, the dimensions of the cre of every creation the physiology of every single created being it all is coming from God and it's all very very much thought out it's extremely fine-tuned so a while back, I, uh, I I mentioned that I was reading this book called "Is Atheism Dead?" Um, by Eric McTex McTexas, and one of the things that really stuck with me from that book is that he described how with the atheists of the world, quote unquote, or the agnostics of the world, the 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 one single concept that seems to really stump them is the aspect of the fine-tuned universe, is that when we look at the universe around us, when we look at, uh, at creation, when we look at the stars, at the sun, the moon, everything is so extremely fine-tuned that if one little part of creation was even like a millimeter off, there's a good chance that our world would not be able to exist. Everything is extremely exacting, down to the amount of water that we have in our body, down to the, our heartbeat, everything, the atmosphere around us, it's its very, very, very specific and it's very well thought out. So we know according to Chassidus that this isn't random, but that this in fact comes from God because we know that God is the one who is running the show. God is the one who's creating the world something from nothing at all times and making sure that these details are exact. So this exactness of every single creature in the world is the focus of what it is that we're going to be talking about today. And so let's get into the text. So here we go. So now the altar it begins and he goes straight into it. He says that the aspect of Mamala Kalamin, which is by contrast from Soviv Kalamin, what is Mamala Kalamin? Mamala Kalamin Almin is the vitality and the vestment within every single essence of every single creature, which is constricted within them with a great constriction according to the being of this the particular creation who is limited and finite in their uh in in terms of quality and in terms of quantity and now the ultra brings a particular type of creation to illustrate this namely the sun and as my own personal thoughts on this matter as a side note i think it's really interesting that the ultra Rebbe brings the example of the sun here, especially because we see, we've seen already that in several places in Chassidus, the sun is actually used often as an analogy for understanding God and how God relates to the world. But what the altar is doing here is my understanding, like my thoughts on the matter, is he's bringing us, he's putting this in perspective and he's reminding us that as great as the sun is, the sun is also still merely but a creation of God, which has 
a certain dimensions to it. It has certain limitations. It's, uh, it's, it has a certain distance to it. It's, we know that it is according to the Tanya here, it says that it's approximately 167 times the size of the globe of the earth. And um, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not an astronomer, so if anybody wants to verify that or has thoughts on that, you're welcome to write that in the in the commentary on YouTube or wherever you want to post the commentary for that. But uh, basically, so the main idea is that we know that the sun, as great as it is, has dimensionality to it. It has limitations. It has a diameter, right? And it has specific qualities, and it has specific aspects to it, namely its light, for example. And we know that it has a certain amount of um, limits to that. It's, it's not unlimited in the amount that it can light. Like sure, we think of the sun as being the source of light, but at, at the same time, it's not unlimited in its power to light. Why is it not unlimited? Because it too is a creation, just like all other creations. And all creations are limited and finite in this way. Because we know that an there's this, there's this idea, and this is a citation from uh, Masachat Chagiga in the Gemara, page 13a, where it says that from the heaven, from the earth to the heaven is a journey of 500 years. So there's like this idea of like, when we talk about, I don't know if it's like speaking poetically or figuratively, or, or if that's truly the case, but there's this aspect of from the earth to the heaven, it's a 500 year journey. And so that may seem like a really long time, but 500 years nevertheless is a finite amount of time. It's an amount of time, which again points to this idea of the limitation of creation. And thus all of this is pointing this to this idea that the vitality that's vested within all of these created beings is in a way that is extremely constricted. It's, very, it's a very intense constriction because it must first go through many, many constrictions, many contractions in order for it to be able to come and to bring into being from its light these different types of creations as they are that are limited and uh, and finite in scope so that's the end of this section and so just to bring it all together so basically so what the ultra bit is really focusing on here is that whereas yesterday we really focused on this like infinite infinite nature of god this aspect of god which transcends all the worlds which in which he doesn't change in which the all, there's all the going on in the world, like down here, or even in the higher worlds above. And then there's God, who's kind of above it all. And even though we know that he is very much involved, we know that he's also unchanging. Today, we focused on the flip side of the coin, the aspect where God is very much present here in this world. And while it's true that God is doesn't change in his way, in, him, in himself, within himself, nevertheless, he has the ability to vest every single created being in its own particular way with its specific amount of vitality that it needs to have. It's the specific amount of dimensionality and the dimension and the um, specific qualities that make each creation what it is. And in order to do this, there needs to be an intense constriction and contraction of God's light. Because as we learned about previously, if God were to just like shine his light in a totally unobscured way, nothing would be able to have any existence of its own. So God's and tremendous ability to contract himself, to obscure himself, to constrict himself is what allows for these created beings to have their particular aspects, their particular qualities and dimensions to them. So that's it for today. And we will continue tomorrow. Uh, again, still continuing with chapter seven of Sharia Chodbamuna, and I will speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzchak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.